appreciate that. Processing, what time is it? Again, we talked about the 28 hour day that doesn't exist. So I need to know where I need to be at one time. That is so important in marketing. Being a musician, I love the studio. Man, I live there, oh my God. But you know what? It doesn't benefit me to stay in the studio 16 hours. It just doesn't because there's other things that I need to do. One thing that we did, and we operate out of two uh, studios in Ohio, one in Poland, Ohio, one in Girard, Ohio, which is like our main uh, studio listings in Girard. And what we do in both studios is we don't have any internet because internet working with musicians can be a distraction because I can get on my Facebook and I can do this. Well, no, we need the four hours, four hour blocks that we have our studio because we need to concentrate on this. Leave your phone in your car, okay? Because uh, especially when I work with young musicians, and, and no disrespect to, to, to anybody in that age group, but the first thing you get, especially when you're working with a client, is, oh, yo, baby, what's up? I'm in the studio. Man, put your phone in the car. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's work to be done. So your time management is very important. And again, we talk very briefly about which hat am I wearing. Very important. And who am I uh, contacting? Am I contacting the promoter? Uh, members of the media, club owners, retail, because there's different language, different conceptual things that I need to know about our conversation. And I have, uh, I should have had, or maybe it's on another slide, data management. Because one thing that, I'm a PC guy, some of you may be Mac people, but uh, one thing that Outlook lets me do is to catalog our conversations. So we catalog our conversations. I'm sitting here, I'm talking to Lisa from Barnes & Noble. Because it's the Christmas season, Jim Kokenauer, Philip K. Jones, they have Christmas product out. Well, I can go into my Outlook and I can see the dates of the last conversations that we've had, what we've talked about, where I need to uh, uh, penetrate, what my inventory is on their shelf, or what they should have, and when is the last time I've received a check from Barnes & Noble. Because, no disrespect, this has been recorded, but Barnes & Noble pays very slowly. Was that disrespectful now? Anyway, they pay very slowly. So I need to know, well, Lisa, before you get our new shipment of product, we haven't received payment for the passion. So that's a part, that's a part of the mix. Who am I contacting? Promoters. What am I giving away to actually get on the stage? Because in 2006, 2007, really bumped my head. If you looked at, the, you can go to this on sounddoctor.com and look at the itinerary, look at where we play. Boom, busiest year, 2006, 2007. Bam, 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 bam. We were everywhere, but we were not making any money. Now, what Sound Doctor does is we choose our shows very carefully. In other words, you may not hear from Sound Doctor on stage for like six to eight weeks, maybe 10 weeks, depending on the situation, because what needs to happen is we need to feed our families. So we beginning, uh, begin aligning ourselves with only those promoters who are going to pay us a cap of what we've set. It doesn't matter. We're not playing um, uh, Cedars every weekend. And there, no disrespect to other bands do, that do that, but they're not making any money. So what we begin to do once we align ourselves with those promoters who were paying us that cap, we put two things in motion. First of all, the promoters who talk among themselves, well, if, you, if you're going to hire a sound doctor, you need to pay them this. So they know that we're just not a chump chain group. The second thing it did in the minds of our audience is the fact that you only saw Sound Doctrine at high level events. Because the perception is, if I can go down every Saturday at Cedars and see Sound Doctrine, I can take it or leave it, right? But if it's an event, if it's a jazz festival, if it's uh, something that's, you know, it has to do with uh, a charity event, and yeah, Sound Doctors play that. Oh yeah, I remember them. I saw them back in July. And they flock to it. And so we begin to build a better fan base. Does that make sense to anybody? Yeah. So that's, uh, that's one of the things uh, that's important. Who am I contacting? And then, uh, of course, uh, prosperity. Prosperity is interesting because the first thing is, how do I define it? Again, when I first got into this uh, young, out of high school, wanted to move to California, wanted to be, like he mentioned, a Billy Cobham on drums, wanted to do this, wanted to be signed by Sony, wanted to take over the world. And I had to really learn how to redefine what I felt to be successful. For some people, success is 100 downloads. Man, I wrote this song, I wrote it, I put it up online, and 100 people downloaded it. That's great if that's how you define it. Some people will say 10,000 downloads. 
Yes, that's successful. Some would say, hey, I toured, you know, 13 cities. That's success. It's, it has to be what you define it. And marketing is at that, at, at that apex is that nobody, you should not let no one define that for you. That has to be your own definition. Like I said before, my family, man, I, I love my family. I want to spend as much time with my family as possible. I'm a pastor, associate pastor at my church. I want to make sure that the people that I'm responsible to care for in my church are cared for. So sound doctrine in some ways has to take a back seat to that. And then I'm a writer. I'm a writer. Um, one of the guys we're going to meet uh, later on today, great guy. I work with him all the time. I won't mention his name because, again, it's been reported. Uh, recorded, and uh, I'll wait till we're on a panel together so we can talk about some of the aspects. But a beautiful thing uh, that he said, because we have three major CDs out. The last CD that we made, thanks to uh, Kevin Amos, you know, our interviews together, and Kevin and Bob Davis pushing it, and other radio stations pushing it. What I thought is our content was our greatest CD as far as content is concerned. It's called Inspired. I love it. I'm personally very close to it. But I had one promoter who says, you know, I think Endurance, was, which was our previous CD, I think that was your best work. And he was right as far as sales was concerned because it was more radio friendly. And that's the hat that he was wearing. And he was saying, well, you know, you don't have the demand or you, don't, you, you seem to have gone a different way or a different direction with this. And I was like, great. That's, you know. I respected his opinion, and he was right because it really showed as far as the units flying off the shelves. But the thing about it was I could sleep well at night because I was true to my artistic convictions. You know what I mean? I didn't try to make a radio CD this time, and I was perfectly fine with that. So that's how I defined it. And then what do I give back? What am I giving back? Once I've reached that level of prosperity as I defined it, what am I doing to make sure that I'm mentoring Others, other musicians, other uh, business or entrepreneurs who are coming up, what am I doing to make sure that I'm taking that time out so that they can get what I have? Even if it's only a little bit, because I don't think I have much, but what I have, I want to be able to give back, like talking to you guys. I'm sure in a lot of aspects I'm preaching to the choir, because most of you already know this, but it is my, it's in my core to make sure that if I have a bit of information, that's where networking starts that we can come together and be stronger together. That's how the situation began with Kenny Blake. We were just talking, oh yeah, I play saxophone, well, I've heard of him, he's legendary, you know, in his own right. Well, what can we do, what can we do? And I didn't think, in my first conversations, that Kenny would want to get on stage with a sound doctor. But absolutely, we can do this, that, and the other. And it just began to build, and here we are. So, what can I give back, and then what's my new network? Because I'm always creating new networks. I got business cards. I'm hoping that each one of us, at some point, five, six, seven months down the road, we can dialogue. This young lady here who uh, uh, blessed me by recording this, your name is? Mary Hart. Mary Hart uh, works with you. And is, is that right? That's correct. OK, so seven months from now, I'm looking at how we can network, because as a pastor, I am very interested in youth. I'm very interested in urban culture, and I want to know what we can do as a marketing team to make sure that her youth are served. Make sense? So I'm always trying to create new networks, and you should be doing that too. Now, very quickly, I would say, and you don't, you know, I'm not going to explain all of this. I'm almost out of time, but this is a flow chart that I made for myself. And if you're into whatever business that you're into, music, whatever, I would say that you should create a flow chart because that's my life plan. It helps me focus on where I should be. Uh, of course, you know, I'm a spiritual person. I feel the Holy Spirit leads me. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. And my paradigm is there. And I'm the husband of one wife, Lori Beulah. We've also been married almost 17 years. She's the core of my life. And I wouldn't be able to do what I do without my, my beautiful wife being for me. You understand what I mean? Amen. 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 All right. <laughs> and then I'm the father of, of uh, three gorgeous daughters. I'm a songwriter, producer, musician. Everything that I do that you see come uh, down the pipe, I'm always thinking about it in terms of a song. I'm always thinking about it in terms of how this makes sense musically because that's just the way I'm wired. 
and then also label da 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 da, -da entrepreneur, and then uh, various bench, uh, business interests. What happens is as I begin growing my marketing skills as a musician, other companies begin to look at the little skills that I had to say, hey, why don't you partner with us? We are doing this. And my one uh, business partner, Jerry Thompson, him and his wife, B. Thompson, invented a drink that is going to be going national in nine months. And it's called Vocal. Vocal. And I have some samples for you uh, today, what, lunchtime and all of that. And why Vocal was created. Vocal was created because Jerry, who owns the studio, kept seeing musicians and singers come in with their own concoctions, most which were damaging their throat. You know, you're trying to get that note out and they couldn't get it. So him and his wife began to do research and went to Kent State University and other universities and uh, uh, discovered and researched products that would help heal, soothe, refresh, and restore the throat. And so I do marketing work for Vocal. So this is going national in nine months. As a matter of fact, uh, you guys have Culture Yarn uh, Dairy here in Pittsburgh. You also have Castle Cold Packers in Pittsburgh, and that's where this product is being uh, manufactured, right here. So you know we're making inroads into the vocal uh, beverage industry, and there, I mean, into the beverage industry, and there is no other, no other beverage that is designed to soothe, refresh, and restore the throat. There's Gatorade and all of that stuff, but what Gatorade is the sports vocal is going to be to the voice. So if you're a preacher, motivational speaker, if you're a teacher, if you are a coach, however you use your voice, vocal is going to be of help. So my little marketing skills from bumping my head in sound doctrine has helped me to develop in other areas. So thank God for that, but I would, I would encourage you to do a life plan for yourself because it definitely keeps me on point. All right, very quickly, marketing on and offline, you need communication skills. Uh, the young lady was so very nice to me to say I was profound. Thank you. But I've worked on my communication skills. I've worked on trying to connect with my audiences so that we can reach you know, some, some form of connection. Uh, you have to have great writing skills. You have to have computer skills. We all saw why you needed computer skills earlier. And we talked about contact management. Um, I'm going to, after I'm done here in about 45 seconds, is to pass out a sheet that I would like to, if you would, give your email address so that we can all keep in touch. And what I do is I'll put that information in my Outlook system, and before your name, I'll put Pittsburgh, and then I'll put KA, which means I met you via Pittsburgh with Kevin Amos, and then when we're coming to Pittsburgh again, I'll shoot you a little blast to say, hey, we're going to be back at CJ's because, of course, next Saturday is going to be awesome, right? <laughs> right? We're going to rock the house. So, you know, if you've come and enjoyed that, when we're back there again, whatever that time is, you'll get that little blast. So contact management is important. Scheduling is huge because I'm not very organized. But you have to schedule everything. I keep my book with me. And then follow-up is even more important than scheduling. Because the guy, Don, who does the booking at CJ's, if I didn't follow up with him and stay on one point, hey, I'm going to call you Tuesday at 1 o'clock. I called him Tuesday at 1 o'clock. He wasn't there. But I reminded him, we said we were going to talk Tuesday at 1 o'clock. So I'm going to be available Thursday between 4 and 7. So he called me back. You know, you know what I mean? you got to have it. you gotta, you got to make sure that you're following up. Graphics is very important. Graphics is very important. I don't know a lot about it, but I know enough to say, hey, what's going to make a compelling message with my album covers, with the album covers of, the, of, of those I represent? What's going to stand off on the store shelf? And then obviously branding, which is another uh, aspect that we don't have time for. I'll be on a panel at 4 o'clock with somebody, and I'll talk a little bit more about branding. Uh, finally, marketing online. You guys are all familiar with these symbols, right? Yeah? Yeah. No? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Very cool. This one is just starting to hit the charts. Do anybody know what that is? That's yeah. called QR code. Uh, Q. QR code. Q and do you know the QR codes first started at Toyota? Yeah. Toyota used that to track their vehicles. But then it just, because of the entertainment, it just bend off to where anybody with a phone, anybody with a camera phone could go to a website, you know, and it's just, it, it, it's just turn over. I don't even know what's next. 
but uh, you place them on flyers, you place them on uh, postcards, you place them on websites, and to show you that uh, I've knocked my head against here, what's missing on this flyer right here? A QR code. They're in magazines now, too. You can pick up a magazine, That's right. read the ad, down in the corner, there's a QR code. There's anything that you can do to market and to, uh, to expand your brand, you go for it. Uh, how much time, I get this question all the time, it's 24 hours a day, man. I got all of these places that I need to visit. I got to update this, update that. I spend maybe 17 hours. That's max. If, I, if I'm on Facebook a half an hour, something's wrong. And I'm not one of those people that, good morning, Facebook family. Good night, Facebook family. Come on. You know, seriously. I, you know, I don't, I don't have that type of time. And it shows me a little about, about, about your lifestyle if you do. No disrespect, but I need to get my message out there. And what's very interesting about Facebook, because you have to kind of ride the wave. Because I've noticed if I put, uh, we're going to be playing at CJ's next Saturday. Okay, I'll get a couple hits, a couple likes, you know. But if I put, oh, my wife just made an awesome apple pie, boom, I'll get 500 likes. <laughs> it's, it, you know, it's interesting, so I have to kind of, I, I have to kind of advertise or put my bulletin up and then put my personal up. You know, I have, to, I have to ride that wave because I still want people to be involved with what Sound Doctrine is doing, but also who I am as a person. Four minutes a day on Twitter. Twitter is kind of on the decline now. You know, nobody wants to know that you're making a ham sandwich. You know, it used to be all the rage, but it's not. And then Seismic, Seismic, and there are other um, uh, platforms like that, but I use Seismic.com to link everything. So I go to my... Um, my uh, LinkedIn accounts, I go to my Twitter accounts and whatnot, and I can type in one message and it'll flow all that out for me. So Seismic is very important uh, for you to utilize, and then you can get that out.